two major events in the life of Wingate University, happening one month apart. The university installs its 10th president, T. Rhett Brown, and marks its 120th commencement, graduating its largest class, 700 bachelors, masters, and doctorates awarded. From Wingate University and WUTV, this is Wingate Today. Hello and welcome to Wingate Today. I'm Jeff Atkinson. For the first time in nearly a quarter century, Wingate University installed a new president. The week-long inauguration in April included activities for fun and fulfillment, reflection and renewal, giving and sharing, serving others and celebrating an historic occasion. Wingate students, employees, alumni and friends at all three Wingate campuses were encouraged to join in the inauguration celebration called Hashtag One Dog. We'll have more on Inauguration Week in a moment, but first, the other big story happened in May. Commencement 2016. They came from 33 states and from 16 countries around the world. 700 students in the class of 2016. The most to graduate from Wingate University in a single year. Look around, soak it in, close your eyes if you must, and take time to reflect the keynote address was given by James Ford, the 2014 North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Ford, a product of Wingate, he received his certification in educational leadership from Wingate School of Graduate Education in Ballantyne in 2014. The teacher and me won't allow you to leave without giving you one final assignment. Are you ready for this? Change the world. No big deal, right? You can handle that. This assignment is due upon your expiration, which hopefully is a long time from now. A record crowd was on hand, 5,600 packed into the academic quadrangle on the second Saturday in May. Anna Karen Abasia. A sign of how the university's changed over the years, undergraduates now make up 57% of the graduating class. Graduate and professional students number 43%. This degree has really opened up a lot of doors for me. I think that the degree will probably help me be more marketable. I thought I was in it for the sheepskin, and actually I wasn't, it turns out. I was in it for the experience. And the experience has been life-changing. Charles Brown II is looking to go to PA school. I cannot wait to get started and everything. I feel like Wingate has really prepared me. It's definitely taught me life lessons about myself, who I am. And prepared others in ways they might not have imagined. I feel like I've helped a lot of people meet Muslims and Arabs because they've never done that before, so I, I like that part of it. The university awarded two honorary degrees, doctorates, one to Jim Furman, longtime member of the Board of Trustees, who was instrumental in helping get the School of Pharmacy off the ground, and an honorary doctorate to North Carolina House Representative Craig Horn from Union County, known as the Education Legislator. For a kid like me that grew up on an island in the Mississippi River, didn't even have running water, to be at this marvelous institution and be, be conferred an honor, receive an honorary doctorate, I just, I'm seldom without words, but today... For the graduates, four years have gone too fast. It's scary to graduate, but you also know that, I mean, you're not alone out there. I have my coaches right there. See me graduate, you have everyone there for you, so and they're always going to be there. That's the way Wingate works. This is more than just a few-year relationship. This is a lifelong commitment to the students that pass our way. We want to be a support, a source for them throughout their lives. In addition to a record number of graduates, there were several other firsts in the class of 2016. The first graduates of Doctor of Education in Community College Leadership. The program started three years ago. A record number of PA students, 51. A record number of pharmacy graduates, 102. And this was Rhett Brown's first commencement as president. It also marked the first class of Byram Scholars to graduate. You've met them before. They were freshmen in 2012, the first recipients of what was then a new scholarship created out of the generous gift of Porter B. Byram. The Charlotte Philanthropist donated a record $20.9 million to the university in 2011. The first class of Byram Scholars, 41 of them, finished their studies and graduated from Wingate University. A centuries-old religious tradition around graduation was brought back to WU this year. Baccalaureate served as a time for students, families, faculty, and staff to observe a quiet, reverent time of reflection during commencement week. Retired minister and member of the Board of Visitors, the Reverend Alan Lehman, was the featured speaker. Lehman challenged students to be open-minded, believe in something greater than themselves, and find ultimate happiness in the greatest biblical commandment, to love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself.
Our neighbor is anyone and everyone who is of any race, religion, color, or sexual orientation. Our neighbor is anyone and everyone who has a physical, social, or economical need, or who is physically, socially, and economically sound. Baccalaureate was held in the BAT Center on graduation eve. We'll have more on commencement week later in the broadcast, including the hooding ceremonies and Wingate's graduate and professional programs, and an initiative to put to good use items that might have ended up in the dump. The focal point of Wingate University's inauguration week was the installation ceremony for President Rhett Brown. As Sharon Foote reports, an underlying theme of the installation was the university's past, present, and future. The dominant theme was its motto, Faith, Knowledge, Service. The mood was both formal and festive as Wingate's faculty processed to the stage for the installation of new president, Rhett Brown. Today is a day of celebration. Needless to say, this is an historic day for Wingate. Students, alumni, faculty, and political leaders were among the speakers honoring Dr. Brown at the ceremony. As Wingate University students comprise roughly half of our town's population, <laughs> the change in vitality you bring to our town is very important to us. Today we celebrate you as a symbol of the future of Wingate University. There has never been a time when Dr. Brown has not put the Wingate students first. We are reassured in knowing that under the leadership of our new president, its virtues of faith, knowledge, and service will remain a constant just as they have for over a century. Dr. Sylvia Littlesweat was Rhett Brown's English professor back in the 1980s. Still teaching, she wrote a poem to commemorate Brown's inauguration. As president, may he journey with purpose and with time's mercy. May his steps be sure. May his dreams as well endure. With former President Jerry McGee holding the Bible, Brown took the oath of office. The duties of the office of president the duties of the Office of President of Wingate University of Wingate University to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and the presidential medallion was presented by Dr. McGee. I declare you Thomas Rhett Brown, the 10th president of Wingate University. Brown is the first Wingate graduate to become the president of this university. He calls it the privilege of a lifetime. I am deeply, deeply thankful to be standing here today as the president of my alma mater. I can't really explain what that feels like. His speech turned poignant when he paused to honor his mother. Brown says she was supposed to be sitting in the front row. She died of cancer two days before his installation. At the end of her life, between the dilaudid and the morphine, my mother was worried that she had missed my parade. Rhett, have they had your parade yet? <laughs> no, Mom. Not yet. Brown described his mom as remarkable, then reflected on what makes learning and living truly worthwhile. We are devoted to a purpose that is woven into the fabric of our being, faith, knowledge, service. Those three words in Latin are on Wingate's official seal. Brown explained each word and described how faith, knowledge, and service combine to create a life with meaning and purpose. Our pursuit is a knowledge that informs and integrates our faith and leads us to serve others. That is the purpose of higher education in this place at Wingate University. Throughout Inauguration Week, faith, knowledge, and service were more than words on a seal or in a speech. Those words were turned into a week's worth of action by Wingate students, employees, and donors. Thanks, Sharon. And the service part was on full display the afternoon of Installation Day. Students and employees had the day off for an event called One Day, One Dog Day of Service. 
Kristen Johnson joins us now. You know, service has been central to Dr. Brown's career. It is, Jeff. Many of his recent speeches focused on this very theme of putting others before yourself, a tradition here that goes back decades and doesn't seem to be slowing down. We have seven um, service projects going on all across campus with over 310 volunteers, the students, faculty, staff, alumni. On the surface, these may look like simple service projects, but each knot in a blanket, each packed bag, each drive of a nail hammers home the point that in life, there is so much more than living for oneself. Sometimes people forget that there's a surrounding community around us, and I just think this is a great way for to have our presence known to them that we also care about them and their families. The service portion of Wingate's motto has been in full swing for decades, yes. dating back to when classes would be canceled so students could help clean up the campus for spring. President Rhett Brown has vowed to take this vision in a new direction and expand it to a larger community. Our pursuit is a knowledge that informs and integrates our faith and leads us to serve others. That is the purpose of higher education in this place. Just three hours of service means 900 children will be able to have food to take home on the weekend. 200 homeless people will have the necessities thanks to hygiene kits. Children at the local daycare will have clean toys. Families will be able to enjoy a new walking trail around Campus Lake. A prayer could be answered because someone signed up as a bone marrow donor. And 100 people will be kept warm this winter. We can give these out to people who are coming in and out of the shelter. We can use them within in our residency program. We also rehouse people. So being able to give these donations, you know, even such things as giving someone a blanket when they move into their new apartment, that makes the difference between being moved in somewhere and making a new home for themselves. Many of our students do many wonderful things, and this is just another day set apart where they get to do that as an extension of what they already do. President Brown was initially hired in 1989 to launch the student service organization UCAN. That stands for University Community Assistance Network. And it continues to provide students with opportunities to serve their community throughout the year. You're going to hear more about one of those projects, Don't Dump, Donate, a little later on. Jeff. Thanks so much, Kristen. Another part of Inauguration Week involved giving back, in this case, to the university that's given so much. Organizers called it the One Day, One Dog Day of Giving. And Dustin Etheridge has that story. I so look forward to our journey together. Thank you so much for being here today. And with those words, Dr. Rep Brown ended his speech at the ceremony where he was installed as the 10th president of Wingate University. But the inauguration week wasn't over. And so on the day after the inauguration ceremony, the Office of Resource Development converted their conference room into a war room of sorts for fundraising. The day of giving followed suit in the theme with the moniker One Day One Dog, but the approach was very different than in years past. The intended goal was to take the ask, as it's called, to social media in hopes of spreading awareness. Hannah Dickerson, the assistant VP for resource development, explains. Crowdfunding is essentially done all online and on social media. Um, so we felt like that was obviously going to work best for us. But and it did work. Wingate University's social media channels lit up with the hashtag one day one dog posts. Initially beginning with posts from various alums and stakeholders that had been identified prior to the event, these individuals were given a special t-shirt and asked to post a selfie with why they chose to give to Wingate. As the day progressed, the photos and social media posts rolled in and the numbers went up. And in addition to taking the day of giving viral, a new way to give was introduced. Annual fund director Candace Kane explains. So we did text to give and we also had our our PayPal form that was mobile responsive. So this is the first year that we actually had our giving day that was mobile friendly for our young alums, mobile friendly for people who are on the run, on the go, or they don't have to be at a computer. In addition to deploying the social media ambassadors, Wingate brought its A game in terms of pre-produced content. My name is Adrian James McMiller Jr. I'm a junior at Wingate University. What is one day, one dog day of giving? Here I realized that Wingate was different from other universities. 
We ask because there's a need. And your general Multiple video vignettes were released throughout the day to continue bolstering awareness about the effort. And several goals and challenges were made, met, and exceeded, including the lofty goal of reaching 500 total gifts in order to meet a challenge by Mr. Jim Furman. Upon receipt of our 500th gift, Mr. Furman made a gift of $25,000 to the university, pushing the total dollar amount into the six-figure range. Dollars and cents aside, the resource development staff knows full well that the only way Day of Giving was a success was because of you, the alums and donors that love this place. You were the ones that took it social and made it viral. Um, what was so great about social media for us was seeing the pride on campus, seeing the pride with our alums. It really connected both the people that are on campus, faculty and staff and students, to our alums that are all over North Carolina and, and really um, the country. You were the ones that decided to text to give. And we felt that that was one of our most successful ways of giving as 25% of our gifts came through just text to give alone. It was one day and the Bulldog Nation showed up and showed out in a big way. Dustin, it certainly was a great day of giving. What was the final tally? Jeff, that's right. When the dust settled, the Office of Resource Development received 510 gifts for a total of, get this, $101,527.21. Great day. Thanks, Dustin. And this final note on Inauguration Week, you may have been wondering about the timing. Rhett Brown actually took over as president on June 1st, 2015. But the inaugural events were held the first week of April to allow for a smooth administrative transition and create opportunities for students, employees, alumni, and donors to take part in the events. Wingate students experienced international negotiation and diplomacy on the world's biggest stage. Seven students traveled to the United Nations in New York City to participate in the National Model UN Conference, one of the largest and most prestigious events of its kind in the world. Wingate took on the role of representing Mongolia. They were able to sit down with diplomats from the East Asian country to learn how they see the world. The conference included negotiating, public speaking, and drafting formal documents. In recognition of their efforts, the Wingate delegation was awarded an honorable mention in the closing ceremony. This was the university's first trip to the UN. For the third time in the past two years, Wingate has a Fulbright Fellowship winner. Tyler Lee, a 2015 grad who currently teaches social studies at Monroe High School in Monroe, is headed to Malaysia in January. As Ryan Brown reports, Lee is the second student athlete to be selected for the honor in the last year. It is over 9,000 miles from Monroe, where Lee is currently teaching, to the country of Malaysia. But more than the miles is the meaning behind the trip, to teach English to Malaysian children. I think that's a really crazy aspect of Malaysia specifically, is that it is wildly different depending on where you are. And I'm really curious about where I'll be. At. The Fulbright U.S. Student Program provides grants for individually designed study projects. During their grants, Fulbrighters will meet, work, live with, and learn from the people of the host country. Lee chose Malaysia. I, I like history. And Malaysia, especially in that part of the world, is a hub of, for, for history. It was an island, well, it's a peninsula that sticks out and um, so all sorts of sailors and traders would go through Malaysia and it's had a lot of uh, turnover in terms of leadership and whatnot. So it has a really dense history. Wingate University opened Lee's eyes to these opportunities through Winter National and the influence as a track student athlete. Being on the sports team, you know, made me into a leader for sure. Being here at, you know, Wingate was so important for me because I really got to know my professors and, you know, Dr. Highland called me in one day and said, hey, this is scholarship. You should, you should think about it. And here we are. After just missing out on his first attempt, Lee took one more shot at the scholarship and was thrilled to receive the news this time around. I was extremely excited for sure. And I was really grateful because this was the second time I applied. I mean, um, I, was, I applied the first time and I was a finalist and then I lost. And, and I thought, you know, why not? It's a free scholarship. It's a crazy opportunity. You know, who knows? Um, so when it happened, I was really grateful because I was really let down the first time. So I was a lot more determined the second time. Um, I didn't want to lose twice. Lee joins Wingate Volleyball alumnus from the class of 2013, Grace Krauser, as a recent Fulbright winner. Krauser received her honor in October. Lee heads to Malaysia in January of 2017 and will be teaching conversational English to Malay high school students. Reporting for Wingate Today, I'm Ryan Brown. The voice of Bulldog Sports also served as the voice of a national championship game.
Ryan Brown was the play-by-play -play announcer for the NCAA Division II National Semifinals and National Championship for Women's Lacrosse. The event, part of the Spring Sports Festival held this year in Denver. Softball and men and women's golf, tennis and lacrosse all competed in an Olympic-style event in which a number of national championships are held at a single site over several days. This is not Brown's first time calling a national championship. He announced the volleyball finals twice. A decade of dominance. That's the headline being written on the Wingate Bulldogs winning their 10th straight South Atlantic Conference Athletic Excellence Award. The honor goes to the school that finishes with the most points in the final standings in each of the conference's 18 sports. It's called the Eccles Award, named for former commissioner and current Rock Hill Mayor Doug Eccles. President Brown and Athletic Director Steve Poston accepted the award. Wingate now has won it more than anyone in conference history. The previous record of eight years was set by Elon University. They called it the Lifelong Learners Event. Psychology professor Dr. Therese Lund and her students invited a group of residents from the Monroe Rehabilitation Center to campus for the day. They took part in classroom activities and were treated to lunch and a campus tour. Students have visited the nursing home before. Lund stresses the importance of service learning and building relationships in her adulthood and aging class. Service learning is a big part of what I believe in as a teacher, and my students have to do service learning in my course, and we thought it would be great to welcome folks into Wingate University because they have been so welcoming to us in their home. The partnership with Monroe Rehabilitation started two years ago when one of Dr. Lund's students started an art program there. Five students have interned at the facility. More than 100 students have volunteered their time. When you think of paramedics, you think of them helping people, not the other way around. But Chuck Gordon is here now and you found it works both ways? Wingate University's Human Anatomy Lab, or Cadaver Lab, is a place people are just dying to get into. Well, some people and Wingate's Doctor of Physical Therapy program is happy to oblige. The more sensitive among us might enter a cadaver lab with a certain amount of trepidation. EMTs, well, they're chomping at the bit. I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> Wingate University opened the doors of its cadaver lab to eager Union County emergency medical technicians in April. The EMTs got a chance to examine and touch body parts they'd only previously read about in books. I had one come back to me the other day and he said, I held a heart in my hand. Well, you, you can't get that out of a textbook. For several lab sessions last month, first-year students in Wingate's Doctor of Physical Therapy program gave EMTs a tour of the human body. They examined the hearts, lungs, muscles, tendons, and other parts of the cadavers used in class by DPT students. They're actually getting an opportunity to see inside what we'd normally only get an opportunity to see on the outside. The hope is that the hands-on exploration will enable EMTs to make better and quicker decisions at the scene of an accident or other emergency. Now that they have the opportunity to recall exactly what's in that area as far as vital organs and things like that, depth perception of where those things are, it, it may be valuable to them. Sandy Mills with Union EMS's Education Division and Mike Easley, head of campus security at Wingate, set up the collaboration after running into each other on campus earlier this year. The result is an opportunity for EMTs that Brian Edwards, director of Union EMS, says is rare. Where it has taken place, Edwards says, the results are positive. The outcome has been phenomenal. Uh, you see an increased uh, success rate in skill practice because they actually know what they're doing in relation to what the organs are themselves. So it's, it's a great outcome, it really is. EMT Heather Griffin says she was able to see what a medical condition such as high blood pressure does to the organs of the body. You actually get to see the impact that it has on the heart and the vessels and the lungs and everything. You can see it in the swelling in their toes and you can, it just affects everything. It kind of, kind of really, like I said, full circle education. It kind of shows the whole picture. For the EMTs, the benefit is obvious but it's been helpful to the Wingate students as well. Teaching and answering questions help reinforce what the DPT students are learning. Helps them put it in their own words so they can remember it later. The students in there are awesome. They answer all of our questions and ask us questions and it's pretty awesome. Such collaboration is encouraged at Wingate. It's great and in healthcare today you have to be collaborative. So we're trying to really instill that psychological mantra in our students in that they have to be able to work with other people in the healthcare industry. Edwards would love for all of his EMTs to have the opportunity to explore the cadaver lab. 
So far, he says, about one-fifth of the union's 150 EMTs has done so. At this point in time, I don't think we're going to have to mandate it because there's such a high interest in it. Everybody's wanting to get into it. This isn't the only collaboration between union EMS and Wingate. Wingate nursing students ride along with the EMTs as part of their curriculum, and there's also a partnership between union EMS and Bulldog athletic trainers. And the Wingate connection to the community doesn't stop there. In late April, Dr. George Shupin, director of the Human Anatomy Lab, opened up the lab to any medical clinicians in the area. Great work in the community. Thanks, Chuck. Returning to commencement week now, students graduating with nursing degrees received a wonderful send-off in the Bat Center Recital Hall. It's the blessing of hands and pinning ceremony. The ceremony is designed to provide a spiritual experience linking the art of administering health care to the physical hands of the nurse providing the care. Ten students graduated with Bachelor of Science in Nursing, BSN, degrees, and they're ready to go to work. I got a job lined up for CMC Pineville to work in their emergency department as a nurse. This is Wingate's third class of students to graduate in the BSN program. Students in the Master of Arts in Sport Management, or MASM program, were recognized at a reception at the Terrace Cafe of Ballantyne in South Charlotte. Master's candidates each receive a hood upon their completion of their academic program. This was a chance for them to receive their hoods and fellowship with fellow class members. 28 are in the program. Director Dawn Norwood challenged the graduates to keep working hard, and Dean Travis Teague encouraged them to not become complacent in life. In a packed Austin auditorium, the School of Pharmacy placed doctoral hoods over the heads of 102 students who completed requirements of the program from both the Wingate and Hendersonville campuses. Students who graduated with honors received cords to mark their accomplishment. Dr. Jennifer Buxton, Chief Pharmacy Officer of Cape Fear Clinic in Wilmington and a faculty member, was the guest speaker. You have many great challenges ahead of you as a practicing pharmacist, and you will be called upon to be a leader every day. You will be asked to embody the oath of the pharmacist that says, quote, devote your professional life to the service of all humankind. And you'll be asked to put the needs of your patients and your community at times before your own. You'll be called upon to lead by example and at times to take charge. And as a practicing pharmacist, you won't have the opportunity to politely decline or simply ignore these charges. And to complete the ceremony, each student received a copy of the oath of the pharmacist. Believe it or not, accounting is one of the oldest professions. There's evidence of accountants dating back to 7000 BC. And to recognize students who completed the Master of Accounting degree, faculty members hosted a hooding ceremony at the Jesse Helm Center in Wingate. This MAC program is small, but it's a close-knit group, and traditionally they've done very well in the CPA exam. For those who choose to take it, they have a 100% pass rate. All of the professors have professional experience, so we've all worked in public accounting and we try to bring that into the classroom so to supplement the book knowledge. And what I'll tell students is, this is the way the book tells you to do it, and this is the way you're going to do it in real life. Seven students graduated in the Master of Accounting program this year. It started out about five years ago. Students in the service organization, UCAN, started a collection drive called Don't Dump, Donate. The idea is just that. Collect items from students they don't want to take home and donate them to the community. Everything from microwaves to shoes, clothing to first aid kits, and even packages of ramen noodles. Items were taken to Cuddy Arena, sorted by category, and faculty and staff and neighbors in the community were invited to browse and take home for free. We just want to make sure that the goods students are not taking home are being repurposed and not just disposed of in the trash can or left behind on campus. We want to put them to good use. Organizers say Don't Dump Donate is just another way that Wingate serves the community. The university was recognized for its work reaching out to the Latin American community. A TV crew from Spanish language network Univision was here in mid-April to talk to WU students about their experiences at Wingate and life in America. The story aired in mid-May. It was a, a very touching day because what I thought was going to be brief, pointed, turned into several hours because some of the students were, were weeping with joy and gratitude because of what Wingett had offered them and their families. Wingate's engagement with the Latino community dates back to the late 50s when students from Cuba attended school here. After a year of planning, Wingate's three to five year strategic plan gets the okay by the Board of Trustees to move forward. 
More than 500 faculty and staff, students, alumni, and friends of the university have been involved in drafting the plan. There are four major initiatives. Here they are. The university will be organized to promote agility and innovation. We'll be strategic about growing enrollment, focus on providing a transformative student experience, and we'll work at developing partnerships in the community, town and gown. They're calling the initiative Laboratory of Difference Making. And finally, you're used to hearing about bear sightings in the mountains, but in the Carolina Piedmont, for a few weeks, an acrylic bear resided in Wingate. Art students here painted the mother and cub to get her ready for the barefootin' public art walk in downtown Hendersonville. Bears line Main Street of the Henderson County town during the summer. Businesses and organizations sponsor them, and in the fall, they're auctioned off with the money going to charity. Students on Wingate's two campuses in Wingate and Hendersonville teamed up in the project. It was a great chance for the campuses to come together. Giving a sense of place to Hendersonville, we feel like that's what we did. That's what sculpture does. You know, many times when you travel, what you remember when you drive away is that particular sculpture in that town and you look at that as a landmark. The Wingate bear, named Care and Compassion, one of 20 bears, will be on display in downtown Hendersonville until a public auction on October 22nd. That'll be at the Flat Rock Playhouse in Flat Rock. And that's our show for this time. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Thanks for watching.